steering and council. We want to start our press conference and I want to appreciate the fact that you have made a lot of effort to be here on the Friday. Uh, we are reading a statement uh, on the subject of the state of the nation, the economy and the politics in the country. And uh, I wish that uh, the press also introduces itself, Jim, just as, as we shall introduce ourselves as we read the statement, so that we can know us. And my name, before the others introduce themselves, is Charles Kariu Kibabogo. I'm the secretary of the Fubamana Joint Forum of Religious Organizations. And next to me, because we won't be reading, and he introduced himself. I'm Archbishop Dr. Jerry K. Malabara of the United Christian Churches of Canada and the Vice Chairman of this organization. Somebody who has arrived, maybe we'll give him a minute to. Kenya, 
where peace, righteousness, justice, prosperity, and patriotism prevail in our motherland Kenya as advocated in our national anthem. As a forum, JFRO has five guiding values. One, faith in God. Two, righteousness. Three, transparency and integrity. Four, inclusiveness. And five, mutual respect. We, the undersigned religious leaders, drawn from the various religious organizations, express our concern about the current state of our beloved country. Good morning, everybody. The next software to the economy and politics. The country is not in good place economically and politically. In the last five years of President Guru's leadership, the country's public debt increased to 9 trillion shillings and is still rising. Recently, it is reported that there are 764 billion pending bills from the previous administration. This is nothing short of a pub public theft. The culprits must be arrested and money recovered for the benefit of Kenyans. The public wage bill was about 55% of the annual tax revenue. Because of the heavy expenditure on servicing the external debt, there was not enough money for development and for essential services to the public. Medical and educational services money for development and for essential services to the public. So medical and education services were at their worst. At this time, the economy was not growing, owing to a number of unfavorable conditions, including the COVID-19 pandemic, when many businesses collapsed. Un with unemployment rising alarmingly, the toxic politics which began shortly after 2017 general election con contributed to the poor performance of the economy as well. The handshake of 2018 between President Uhuru Kenyatta and Honorable Raila Odinga led to the split of Jubilee, the ruling party. For last five years, uh, four years, Jubilee was fighting with itself and there was no opposition to check on the government because the main opposition party was voting with the ruling party. Then there was the politics of BBI which consumed billions of shillings. And at the time when the scourge of COVID-19 pandemic was at its worst. During this time, the economy of the country was hurt seriously and ruthlessly. The cost of living has been rising. The state of the economy was worsened by the campaigns for the general election of 2022, which started long before the time provided in the Constitution. With the economy not performing for about five years because of bad politics, COVID-19 pandemic, corruption and severe drought, Kenyans have become poorer and poorer. Poverty, diseases and hunger are everywhere in streets, in townships and in the land. Reverend Rangu Thomas Federation, the role of the government, the prime role which is the cardinal role of government, elected by the people, is to promote economic development of its people, two, to protect them from their internal and external enemies, and to create conditions which enhance their living standards whenever they are in the Republic of Kenya. With the gloomy economy and the toxic politics. The country is in today. The government does, have, does not have the luxury of spending public money extravagantly. Every shilling should be accounted for and should be spent on the right priorities. And the first priority is providing services at the grassroots level, helping the people to meet 
their basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter. This is a hierarchy of basic human needs. The priority is not in creating big offices for bureaucrats and politicians, so costly at the expense of the taxpayer. There are several uh, parliamentary committees which have an oversight role. Each committee has a large number of MPs. This must be limited and it must be ensured that no seating allowances are paid for attendance which are abolished by SRC. Size of government and expenditure. <coughs> the preamble of the Constitution gives Kenyans an inalienable right to determine the form of governance of our country for the well-being of the present and future generations. The Constitution envisages the government based on essential values of social and economic justice. Unfortunately, the Constitution has created top heavy structures of governance the country can no longer afford. Having carried the burden for 13 years, it has proved beyond a reasonable doubt that this structure of governance is absolutely unsustainable. The economy in the country is taking the shape of a snowball going downhill by the day. Dr. Mutiso from the Baptist Churches of Kenya. I continue. Now there is a great need, you know, for Kenyans to re-examine the constitution and reduce the size of the government and the legislature by way of referendum when the economy recovers. Kenyans have always felt that they are, uh, they are over represented uh, since the enactment of the 2010 constitution. Comparing Kenya with other countries, the cost of running their government and the legislature is too high and unnecessary. There are also a number of uh, troubling provisions in the Constitution requiring amendment. In the 2018, uh, the Ufungamano Joint Forum uh, for Religious Organizations uh, proposed a reduction of the National Assembly to 150 members. There are 347 members of parliament and 67 senators with a GDP of uh, dollars uh, 70.53 billion. USA or United States of America has a population of over 325 million uh, people with uh, five, uh, 35 congressmen and 100 senators and, uh, and a GDP of uh, uh, dollars 18.75 trillion. Ufungabano Joint Forum proposed a reduction of the number of MCS from the current 1,450 to 750. For the counties, Ufungabano Joint Forum uh, also proposed a reduction of 47 counties uh, to 16 and the 16 counties could be clustered into viable economic blocks with the seven counties. The cabinet, as for the cabinet, there is a saving grace in that the constitution, uh, section 152, provides for a cabinet of between 14 and 22 
cabinet secretaries. But it is uh, a joint forum for religious organizations uh, considered opinion that uh, Kenya does not need more than 16 ministries. That is uh, 16 CSEs. Now and in the new future. Now compare the current number of cabinet uh, secretaries with their assistants, with the number of ministers in more developed countries. Uh, the 2010 constitution abolished the position of assistant ministers, and that was for good reasons, and does not envisage uh, this position in whatever government is formed after a general election for economic reasons and for the good order of running a government, the controversial appointment of 50 chief administrative secretaries by the president of Kenya needs to be reviewed. Uh, the High Court has already nullified the appointment and its decision must be accepted and respected. It increases the number and the cost of cabinet already bloated by the world standards. And in any case, Kenya can ill afford the luxury of uh, having such a large cabinet uh, which will not add any value whatsoever to the service delivery uh, to the citizens. The president would do well in saving the money for the benefit of ordinary uh, Kenyans. Uh, also, in the interest of good order in government and to reduce the cost, uh, Ufungamano Joint Forum for Religious Organization urges that the number of principal secretaries must be limited to one, just one principal secretary in each in a ministry assisted by directors of the departments. Reverend Jafet Kambi, Methodist Church. Call for peace and patriotism. The general election held on 9 August 2022, where Kenyans voted peacefully, produced a president to succeed His Excellency Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, who led the public of Kenya for 10 years as president. After IABC declared Honor Honorable Ruto president of Kenya, Honorable Raila Odinga went to the Supreme Court with a petition, but the Supreme Court upheld Honorable Ruto's election as president. The decision by the Supreme Court must be respected and accepted. Consequently, Honorable William Samuel Ruto was sworn in as the President of the Republic of Kenya on 13 September 2023. As President, Fungamano Joint Forum urges Honorable William Ruto to ensure the government does what it takes to revive the economy and to ensure the country is stable economically, socially, and politically. It must be noted that Kenya Shillings 1.6 billion allotted to the top three executives for purchase of vehicles is a huge waste of public money. Also, we have observed that the new government has embarked on frequent retreats outside Nairobi. This must be stopped as they also consume unnecessary seating allowances besides enjoying FT monthly salaries. It is imperative that all patriotic Kenyans, including politicians, observe the rule of law in their daily activities in order to promote peace and justice. In this regard, Fungamano Joint Forum urges the opposition parties to play their rightful role in parliament and to seek justice where necessary following the laws of the land. 
holding the country to ransom does not augur well for our political leadership. We urge all the clergy to address and advise the faithful not to engage in violence. Vandalizing property and looting are not a peaceful process of demonstration. Equally, by cutting certain businesses and products is counterproductive as it undermines economic activities. Kenya belongs to all Kenyans, big and small. Our peace is not negotiable. We all need peace in our daily lives, and the country needs peace for economic and political development for the benefit of all. For this reason, Fungamano Joint Forum urges Honorable Laila Odinga to call off the, the demonstrations organized by Azimio and to pursue any grievances of the party through the processes and systems provided in the laws of Kenya to promote the economy and the welfare of the country. The demonstrations do more harm to the economy than helping improve it. The breach of peace has proved in the past that the investors have shied away from Kenya. At a time when Kenya is experiencing extreme economic problems, the country requires all Kenyans of goodwill to join arms in lifting our motherlands from disintegrating. God being our helper in this effort, the government and all the orders of political positions should take lead and the, and the citizens will follow in building the nation. In conclusion, I want to say that the Fungamano Joint Forum for Religious Organization uh, sends sympathies to all who lost their loved ones and property during the demonstrations, including the PCA church and the mosque burnt in Kibera. Let us love one another as we love ourselves, for this is a command from God. May God bless Kenya and may God bless us all. Thank you. Members of the press, you have uh, heard our statement. We will give you copies of the statement uh, as you give. But uh, before we do so, we would encourage you to uh, raise comments, questions, or if you have indeed any suggestion, because we are talking about Kenya and the state in which we are, you are free to do so. Yes. Hi, I have a, a question for you, my son. I just I have a question or rather concern. I've listened to the to the question right? and uh, it's more of condemning the talking, uh, condemning the demo of what is happening and I've not had a dialogue mentioning a dialogue between maybe the, the two heads. And uh, my question would be now as religious leaders where it's where you are so what are some of the things that you are doing maybe to make sure that uh, maybe the two leaders meet or they talk or somehow they can to stabilize and come? Uh, it is true that uh, many groups, especially religious groups, have already expressed themselves uh, to the need for dialogue uh, in Kenya, especially between uh, the, the, the president and the opposition and, uh, and uh, we share the same statement actually in the uh, uh, here we are saying that uh, there are uh, better avenues for resolving the problem that we are having other than demonstrations that are, are proving to be very destructive in this country so we we are actually for dialogue uh, from what we are hearing from the opposition, uh, oftentimes they have said that uh, what, what they want 
uh, is that uh, they want uh, uh, talks, they want a uh, government of national unity, uh, they want, uh, even yesterday, uh, they want the spirit of BBI to be pursued, uh, which basically means let us uh, sit down, let us negotiate uh, for uh, a shared government or a coalition of some sorts. Uh, the, and the, we are of the same view. Actually, uh, Kenya, ever since 1964, uh, Kenya has survived by coming together. The opposition coming together with a, uh, with a winner. We do know that our constitution, uh, the Kenya constitution, even when we uh, passed it in 2010, uh, we, we, we were all jittering about the constitution in the sense that uh, the constitution is a winner, take it all. You win, you take everything. Uh, and then the loser loses everything. That's where the problem really uh, sits at the, at the moment. But since 1964, leaders, political leaders have always come together, have uh, negotiated for unity and sharing of government. Ever, ever since 1964. President Moike pursued the same uh, politics. Uh, uh, President Kibaki Kem uh, pursued the same, uh, you know, the same uh, 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 form uh, uh, where there was a negotiated uh, coalition or government of uh, national unity. Uhuru Kenyatta Kem and they pursued the same thing through an action. I think what opposition is saying let us, uh, let us uh, sit and negotiate, negotiate uh, for a uh, government of national uh, unity, uh, something that we also favor at this time. Maybe a uh, follow-up question on that. So, uh, okay, there is a concern that, um, that religious leaders uh, more for a very long time will be a voice of reason for the country when things are not looking well. And at the moment now, the demonstration that, that His Excellency Raila Odinga has said that he'll just be doing it on Monday and Thursday, maybe Friday. So my question would be, um, from where you stand as religious leader, leaders, so is it more like calling for a press conference, talking about uh, the two parties sitting down and, uh, and talking, or rather than you acting on it, like making sure that this, these two leaders come together in a way so that they talk rather than just talking about dialogue and everything. So what are some of the things that you are doing? Yeah, 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 based of faith, you will never go for Fuji, for demonstrations. You will never do that. Never. But we are for peace. What we, we are doing, we are encouraging every battle which has any agreements to present themselves together. And if I have an argument, for example, why don't I give an alternative answer? And I mean, when they meet together, when they can meet, is to bring in alternatives or options that are relevant to bring in peace. That would be wonderful. But like we said earlier, this question of uh, having elections then join together. That's the, we, we don't want to be political here. But then it's not possible. It's not possible. But you might have the reasons to present for any argument. Why don't I be allowed to give them? That's where we're going to start. We are encouraging the principles to sit down and bring up an answer. But not in the streets. Jews are not connected for 
the streets of Nairobi, but for the city now. Thank you. I want to also try and clarify uh, the emphasis on our statement. The emphasis is that Kenyans, big and small, must observe the rule of law. And the rule of law is the constitution and the laws of Kenya made by parliament. If we want to be a country that is integrated, we must observe the rule of law to the extent that the opposition plays the role of opposition for the benefit of the country. Because if we are going to be joining opposition and government after every election, that is a disservice to the country. And we are not going to go anywhere as a country where you have no opposition, where after elections an opposition feels that it is, it is uh, aggrieved and wants to join the government so that the government does whatever it wants and checked. And this is what we witnessed in the last four years of President uh, Uhuru. We don't want that kind of a, a situation. And this is why our emphasis is on the opposition playing its rightful role to save this country, but not by Demonstrations, because demonstrations are destructive. I think that is the message that we are giving you and the nation. Thank you. Another question? Yeah, on top of that, uh, if you read our documents, like he has just said, we have brought in views that if they are looked at, this country will be governable, will be prosperous, will be out of danger, because we sat it down, we have sat down like our organization and come up with tangible and workable options that this country can honor. And we are saying we honor all. Every Kenyan must be honored. Opposition and government and the, the citizens. We think we have given you enough answers now. Um, you're welcome. Okay. okay. Uh, then, uh, yes. Yeah, from somebody else? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. From your statement, you said that there's a time you suggested, uh, or rather, you, you said it's going to, for the members of parliament to be reduced. They were not, even the member of uh, the MCS. We've heard our president in some parts of the country has promised to give them constituencies, meaning more addition of member of parliament. Yet uh, your voice is uh, our country economy cannot handle all that. Maybe what are you planning to do for your voice to be heard? That would be the first one. And the second one, um, uh, recently, the court stopped the, the CSs from assuming their offices and uh, any salary being given to them. But despite that, the government went against that, and the CSs already have assumed the office, meaning they will receive the salaries. And uh, what would be your message to our president? And the last one, uh, we talking about the demonstrations and uh, calling upon Raila Ondinga to stop the demonstration. His concern being uh, the, the, cost of, the high cost of living, and the second one, uh, the, the last one, the one he usually finished with is uh, for the server to be opened. We've interacted with some Kenyans personally. Some argues if, if uh, our president is sure he won the election, why is he not allowing the server to be opened? I don't know whether he has that authority, but what would be your message as a, as a church or a voice as a church in those three scenarios? Uh, I want to... I'll give you the comfort of the fact that uh, this statement is going to go very far. It's not just for the press. When you look at it, you will see that it has been forwarded to the president to start with, deputy president next, prime cabinet secretary next, senate next, parliament next, Leader of opposition, next. 
Chief Justice, next. NCIC, next. SRC, next. And the EACC, lastly. These are institutions that, in a way, govern the behavior of citizens. And we as citizens must respect the constitutional mandate of these organizations. So from here, we will seek audience with the president, we will seek audience with the deputy president, we will seek audience with the Prime Minister, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, and all these others to emphasize the role they must play in their constitutional markets. So we are going, we are going ahead. And that's, that is the program that we, we have before us. And we are also telling the citizens that you must also wake up and understand that the kind of politics that is, is being played in this country and even some behaviors of the government itself are likely to lead us an unless there is, there is patriotism and unless Kenyans keep peace and unless you media also Become, become, I would say, impartial in the way you even report these things. Because we are all in it. And if we don't play our parts, singly and collectively, obviously this country is going to sink. This is our concern. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your questions. Uh, First of all, I want to talk about the, uh, the cabinet administration our secretaries. The issue is not new in our news. It was there during the whole time. Uh, Maraga dismissed the whole thing, but they stayed the whole tenure of the whole Kinagasa government. Uh, they have come back. That's why we see that uh, uh, in our in our in our, in our press statements, there are a number of things that need to be made clear back and white in the constitution. That's why we need a referendum. That's why we are proposing. Because these are some of the things that are, we feel they are not right to the Kenyans. The other question that you asked about uh, the demonstrations. Let me first of all correct the view and the notion of the media. We are not condemning Raila Odinga. He has got every right to wear his grievances, but in a more dealt, in a structured way, in the Constitution. In the, in the, uh, in the Constitution, cross or piketty, it is minus violence, minus vandalism, minus thuggery, and minus burglary. That's now what the church is calling, that uh, the opposition are free. And in fact, they fought for that thing called freedom of expression to express themselves whenever they feel they are grieved and about grievances. But in our press statement, we just say we, we have got a structure, a very good position, a structure. I believe in the capacity. Uh, Reda Odinga was once working with William Ruto in the ODM, and uh, they are buddies. They are only praying with the mind of the Kenyans. They know each other. The Brazil candidates. So the issue is that uh, they have got an avenue. They can save Kenya from bad pain, and they can engage themselves. And if there is an issue uh, of, uh, of uh, opening uh, what the servers are, as Kenya have got no power. There is a high court, the Supreme Court, the East African Court. There is a process they can follow, which can save Kenya from anarchy. But now, what, uh, we are, what we are very much concerned is the loss of life, loss of property, or to the insults in Kenya, okay, because Kenya is voting. Actually, the campaign was done uh, even for four years. Kenya has never, never fought. The elections were done, the elections were announced, and Kenya has never fought again. 
then there was a, a Supreme Court petition, in fact, we never fought, the case never fought again. Then uh, the, there's also the, uh, the time of, uh, of the president, uh, William Ruto. Our, our president, uh, the former president, is the one who gave the instruments of power to uh, honorable uh, president, uh, Dr. William Ruto. He gave it because he belonged to the Azimio coalition. He gave the power and the instrument because he believed that the current government won the elections. So if there is any uncertainty of the truth, it should be addressed more amicably through the process or the political process or through the parliament or the senate. So that's actually uh, what I would like to, to go. About the, the food commodities, the, the price of food commodities, about the, 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 the high cost of living, we, we have seen here that the, the very role, the key core role of the local mandate of the government is to make sure it makes the life of every citizen more accommodative and more better to create a conducive environment where everybody will be able to do business, will be able to go to the place of work, will be able to, to grow from where he was to the best, the better place. So I think I've uh, uh, answered some questions. May God bless you. God bless you. Uh, one, the attack of journalism in covering the demonstrations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two, the um, I like claim that he was an active to fascinating him. What is your stand? Because you mentioned you are being guided by the constitution and Kenya's for our Do you support with the police? Mm -hmm. Or what is your take? And three, the vandalism and the invasion of former president's premises, both yesterday and the previous day. What is your stand? Okay, <clears throat> if I can attempt to respond to that, I would say first and foremost that the freedom of the press is enshrined in our constitution and any civilized society must respect the place and the importance of the press and the people of the press must be protected and they must not be treated as if they are partisan any side. Secondly, we must say that uh, the leader of the opposition and any Kenyan must be protected to be able to express their democratic right to agree or to disagree with any issue within our nation. And so we condemn in the strongest possible terms any attempt to threaten the life of anyone, be it an ordinary Kenyan or any political leader. So it's unfortunate that there was that attempt at the life of the leader of the official position, Honorable Raila Amorodina. It's also sad to see that people have uh, taken the right to demonstrate and express their democratic rights and have abused it so that vandalism, thuggery, and all manner of crime have been committed in the name of expressing that truth. At the same time, there are those who have reacted by grabbing or invading private property. That again is a violation of the right and the freedom, the right to ownership by private uh, persons. That you have a right to own property in this public anyway. And it is the right with the responsibility of the government to protect lives and the property of the and that rule is exercised through the work of the police. It's therefore unfortunate that the property of our former head of state, His Excellency President, former President Uhuru Kenyatta's property was vandalized, animals stolen, and trees cut, and uh, eventually burnt. That was very, very unfortunate for us as a country. And that must not be encouraged, it must be stopped. And those who did it must be brought to book. The other call that we have to make is that the path now stops with the President, His Excellency, Dr. William Samuel Rafuto. 
We have one president. We have one nation. He must be seen to lead for the front. He must be given the opportunity to lead this nation. Even in the times of turmoil, he is still the leader, as we know, recognized by law, voted by Kenyans. We have issues as a nation to deal with, but he is our leader. We must accord him every respect. But again, he must take the responsibility to form a bipartisan mechanism to bring both sides together on a negotiating table. It has been that way in the past, when the Kenyans uh, disagreed in the past. They even invited leading personalities in the African continent who have got goodwill for our country. And they can bring the parties together at a negotiating table to discuss issues. And then uh, we know our constitution is not a document that is written on stone, it's not cast on stone. It is negotiable. It is something that Kenyans can negotiate and have negotiated. And they can bring any issue that they want to bring into that document. And they can arrive at a way forward. The BBI was an attempt at doing that. Because this issue of winner takes it all. It is something that is always contagious throughout our history. And we should be able to find a way dealing with it. I do remember the ruling of the court that uh, the BPI was not essentially faulty itself. It is the process in which it was introduced. It was not by popular you know, participation of Kenyans, but the document itself has important the issues was addressing that are still pending that need to be addressed in a way that is participatory, that involves all Kenyans. And that's why we are saying the president has a singular responsibility to ensure that that whole process is a popular process and that it's all inclusive and that all parties are included. And that is possible. And he is the only person who has the authority and the responsibility to bring all Kenyans from all divides, from all walks of life, so that they can negotiate on the issues that we are facing together as a nation. This is our country, and none of us can be wished away. None of us can be excluded. And all of us must feel that our voices are being heard, and we can contribute to the future of our nation together. Thank you. And it's all about give and take. And for that to happen, must they take uh, the, they do away with the hard span. I think there is a space created for the dialogue. But having violence, looting, vandalism is not a solution to lowering the cost of uh, living. The cost of living will, will take a back seat because the damage it will inflict on the Kenyan economy and the people at large will be too much to, to, to pay. And it will take many months before we can recover from that. As we have seen in the last uh, three demonstrations, there have been millions, some sectors have suffered millions of shilling loss. And I think that is not good for, uh, for the economy of the country, which is already willing and it's uh, trying to make a comeback. So the first and foremost is to reduce the violence, and then that will create space for the violence. Yeah. The, I also need to say, uh, having a question, a question that you asked about uh, over representation yeah. in Kenya. Ufungamano uh, Joint Forum for Religious Organizations has actually been a, 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 voice, a, a voice in the wilderness over the years about over representation in Kenya. And simply put, uh, we have just, our start has just been on a, an economic uh, principle that says the bigger or the larger the government, the poorer the people. In the sense that uh, when the cost of doing government is so high, like in this country, Kenya, then all the taxes that we pay goes to pay uh, to, to pay the civil servants, uh, public uh, servants in uh, this uh, country. Uh, most of them are 
uh, politicians, if you see the uh, strongly called the, 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 uh, the size of uh, the salaries. And therefore, we have been engaging uh, SRC about uh, salaries and salary administration in this uh, uh, country, but really at 55% of the GDP going to pay, I mean, to pay salaries is just too much. There will be no money left for development. Uh, but we have been a lonely voice about the over-representation in Kenya. And now it is increasing. It's increasing. Uh, people are getting appointments all over the place. Uh, salaries are being increased. Allowances are being given left, right, and center, and uh, almost 60% of the money of the GDP is going to go to salaries. And Kenyans can only be poor and poor. Now, as to the question, what can we do extra? Uh, there is very little that we can do except to continue to speak out that uh, Kenyans, we are overly presented uh, comparatively to other countries around us. Uh, even to developed uh, countries, they do not do things the way we are doing them in Kenya. So, it's a sad uh, state of affairs uh, in Kenya, uh, in the area of over representation. And now, we want more constituencies, we want more wards, we want more this and that. Uh, it's like uh, that factor has not been there, uh, has not registered in the minds of decision makers in this country. Thank you. Yes, mine is very brief, uh, but uh, very important in our country where we have enjoyed uh, peace. We know what has happened in some of the uh, neighboring countries through civil war. And as a church, we would like to call upon our leaders because leaders are very important. The opinion of leaders drive this nation. And so, uh, we have seen just statements, rhetorical uh, statements, which have been made by a few of our leaders and the effect that they can produce to the masses. Uh, you recall uh, the Senator Sifuna uh, pointing out that uh, the masses can and take what they find on the way. And we also know uh, what uh, the leader of majority, Juan uh, Chungwa, the statement, and what it has caused. So as the church, we would like to urge your leaders to truly uh, mind the peace of our nation and be careful with the statements that they, they issue. Even when we are very annoyed and uh, feeling that uh, we need to go out there, uh, the leaders should know that the effect of the, the statements that they make can burn this country. So we call upon our leaders just to cease, desist from that and be careful of the effect of the statements that they issue and the way they can burn this country. I think that's very important for us to take responsibility of any utterance that we make. Uh, that is the small input I wanted to add.